The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And so we've already, you know, connected this creation thing with the, the law of the Lord or with the Torah um, to identify that they are two different pictures of the same thing at work. The sun is adding warmth, is adding light, um, it is enriching our lives, but on the other, on the other side of that <clears throat> is the end of verse 6 where it talks about, uh, and there is nothing hidden from the heat thereof. And that scorching, searching heat of the law, of the word, this begins with the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. This is the ones who are beginning to comprehend the reality of the Lord in his heart, the testimony of the Lord. Not in the New Testament talks about that. Uh, what is it? Um, First John, where he says, this is a paraphrase, uh, if you think the testimony of man is something, wait till you hear the testimony of God. And a lot of people, you know, they'll have a testimony service, and everybody will give their testimony. Well, that's nothing compared to the testimony of Jesus, you know? I mean, the testimony of Jesus is incredible. Well, this is the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the, the surface uh, simple, you know? And so, uh, but let me read so we don't fail here. But more wondrous than God's creation and more beneficial than the rays of the sun that speak of, uh, uh, of the sun that speaks of his heart is God's word. The law shines forth the truth of his heart even brighter than what creation declares. <clears throat> the law of the Torah is the sun. It brings conversion, wisdom, rejoicing, enlightenment, righteousness. It is more precious than gold and sweeter than honey. But to have the sunshine or the word open, uh, opened will show us all of our dark places. It will show us, and this is the last part now, so I'm hoping you're connecting all of this. The first part is the creation, verses 1 through 6. The second part is the Torah, the law, functioning as the sun, and the same thing that he said in verse 1 through 6, uh, 7 through 11. And then 12 through 14 is, his, is this inward awareness of what is out of line with the sun, what is out of line with the word, what is, what is not cleansed. And I had made mention of the fact that the sun, um, it uh, exposes like with its heat and with its rays, but it enlightens, but it also disinfects. It disinfects. And, and you're gonna see the work of disin, uh, disinfection taking place in David's heart as these two begin to be brought to bear. And thank God it's not just exposing, amen? amen. I mean, you know, I, personally I'm not really heavy into being exposed. I'd rather just, you know, but I mean, you know, the sun does do that, you know. But it does more than just expose, it disinfects, thank God, and can remove the germs, can remove the problems and the, the things like that. So, um, uh, it, it is, let's see, <clears throat> so I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I want to talk about a few of these right now. <clears throat> the law of the Lord, which I said is the Torah, because that's really the word used there. The Torah, which is the book. In it is God's instruction and teaching. <clears throat> it is perfect, for it perfectly sets forth the things of God's heart, if opened by the Spirit. It is a guide that takes you down a certain course, just as the sun takes the same circuit every day. And that's, the, that's where most Christians miss it, and I'm not saying that in some sort of elitist way or that we're better than anybody else because I don't believe that. I believe the people that are here are pretty much worse than most other churches. <laughs> so let's just get that settled right off the bat. Uh, so, and, that, you know, I mean, there's some real truth to that. You know? <laughs> But, so, uh, uh, but there is this reality that um, 
it, it, how did I word that? It, guide, it is a guide that takes you down a certain course just as the sun takes the same circuit every day. The word of God is trying to take us down a certain path, a certain path of being his habitation, which is the body, which is the bride. The body and the bride are one and the same. Okay, um, it all relates to this this truth. I mean, there's 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 temple and there's um, I can't even think of all the different aspects, but there there are so many different aspects of the same truth of what he's trying to bring about. <clears throat> and so, the word of God is like the sun; it's got a course. And and you know, if you're just a pagan that doesn't check it out, like the the guys of the Chaco Canyon, and you don't check it out, you just go, well, that sun's just, you never know where it's going to be. I mean, you know what I mean? You could just walk out every day, you know, you walk out at a different time every day and go, well, that thing ain't consistent today, it's over here, <laughs> you know? And you see what I'm saying? And that's pretty much the way people read the scriptures. <laughs> and what? Now why? That don't make sense. Why is that there? I thought it was supposed to be over here. You know, and we just get all confused. But there's a course. God has set his word in a course. And I, I'm telling you, the Spirit of God loves to open our eyes and, more importantly, open our hearts to the Lord in the things that he established this creation for and established us on this planet. His course will never change. The word declaring that course will never change either and these are consistencies see i mean you you look at man everything man touches he messes up you know i mean we can't get up there we can't get out there in the heavens you know the sun moon and stuff we can't get out there too much and mess it up although if you make a trip now to the moon you you could be hit by space junk space junk yeah all this stuff that's been left behind from all these missions and stuff like that. And if we go back to the moon or we start going to Mars more and more, well, already on Mars there's a bunch of broken down equipment. <laughs> and we just barely started. <laughs> you know, we are inconsistent. We are a mess. We will corrupt it. But the law of the Lord is perfect. The creation, in that sense, is perfect. So where's the problem lie? You know, we should be able to figure this out. <laughs> you know, we're the problem. Man is the problem. <clears throat> so, as the sun does not change course, nor does it ever fail to fulfill that course, so the word can keep us on course. In the presentation of creation, he is referred to as, as God. Now, this is a, an important fact. When he talks about the name of God, that when he uses that in verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God. The word God there is Elohim. Okay? Um, and, you know, that's uh, understood because those of us that have searched the scriptures any amount of time will understand that when it relates to creation, he's always called Elohim. That's a, that's a very common thing. But when it relates to the covenant and to Israel, what is he called? Jehovah. Yeah. Okay. So, so now he's using the name Jehovah in relationship to the law. That's a progression. And that's God bringing us in. Can you feel it? I mean, in the spirit, can you feel it? The Lord's drawing us in more and more. He's letting us know more intimately who he is. He's changing his name, not, you know, because... Uh, I remember when I was a Jesus freak, okay, I'd been a hippie, then I was a Jesus freak, and I went to church, and uh, I heard a preacher start talking about my Jesus, the one I had met, you know, my Jesus. And he says, well, almighty God is among us. I'm thinking, who's that? You know, the equivalent would have been, Elohim is here. Okay, it is that far away one who we respect because we're afraid that he'll, you know, strike us down or we don't know, you know, he's so powerful and awesome, as opposed to, um, uh, and I, I noticed different people, when I was in Bible school, I noticed people that didn't seem to have much of a relationship with the Lord, never called him Jesus. I mean, I saw that, I noticed that with people, and I'd go, 
hmm. And sometimes I'd meet people and I'd see how stiff they are and I thought, I'd like to get them talking about the Lord and see how they call him, you know. And they go, God. They talk about, oh, God is so good, isn't he? I go, well, yeah, but Jesus is, you know, our Savior. And he's our life. And, it, you know, and on and on. And it's all full of high-minded pride. But nonetheless, <laughs> there is something to Elohim and Jehovah. <clears throat> um, so in verse 7, he's now referred to as Jehovah. It signals deeper revelation of himself and his intention to us. And I like that. His intention to us. Don't go on and he wants to reach us. He wants to get close to us. He, he, long, he runs this course like a strong man. I love that. You know, he's, he's into it. Yeah, that's right. He's really into us. Okay, so it's, uh, it, its specific task is to convert the soul. And I, you know, I won't go off into all that, but there's much to be said about your spirit getting saved and then calling it soul winning. It's two different things, but that's okay. <laughs> it brings us down like the sun to the one in the desert. Then in brokenness, it opens our eyes. See, and that's, that's the sun. It's bright, it's glorious, but I'll tell you what, exposure to the sun on a regular basis. I mean, if you've been out in the, you know, I've been out a little bit today and, and outside, and I come in, and I'm, I don't know if I'm just getting older or what, but I mean, it's just tough. It feels tough. I feel beat, like beat on, and I'm not even, I can't imagine people that have to work in that all the time, but it takes a toll on you, okay? But in this case, it is the toll of the heart of the Lord who is passionate to bring us into the image of his bride and he presses that word and he presses those commands and he break, he's, he's exposing and that's what David gets into at the end of this. It exposes the things that are not that and you can be destroyed by it or you can be cleansed by it. You can see it as God hating you or loving you. You know? And that sun beating on you, and you just go, well, I don't feel his love. Well, I do. It's a passion to get rid of all this stuff that is not him and not one with him and not after his kind. It's a passion in his heart, and it's not evil. Yes? Right. And maybe you can be removing yourself in the place that you need to be taught. Right. You can be taking yourself out of the situation that turns into what Romans said, expresses the law and for your flesh to fulfill. But it's it's like you, you're wanting to avoid the sun and disturb it by getting it out of the old what is wilderness is old, and there's nowhere to run. It's all old. Yeah. If you're wandering in a desert you know, you've probably got all this stuff, your car broke down, you got all this stuff, and as you're wandering, you're slowly dropping off, you know, the things that, well, oh, that was expensive, I don't care, you know, can you imagine dying of thirst, carrying this big old, and you start dropping stuff, and somebody says, hey, man, that's expensive, you know, that, that CD player is expensive. Dude, I, what am I going to do with a CD player out here if I don't live, you know? You just throw it down and then keep going. Yes. All right, I've got a, a large <clears throat> section here that I need to read, but what I'm going to do is basically we're just going through the, the scriptures 7 through 11, and we're looking at the different names for, the, for the, the Torah because it's broken down into statutes and precepts and all this stuff, okay? And it's, it's that way for a reason. 
Okay, it's not just, you know, in other words, the word Torah or the word law or the word precept or statutes or commandment or testimony or judgments or they're not all interchangeable. But we do that because we don't want to get into the interview. We just go, well, you know, so when the scripture says the judgments of the Lord or, or the, you know, statutes of the Lord, we go, you know, we immediately, we, you, you could have just as well said to us commandments, but it's not true. And so I want to just sort of familiarize you with the different ones, and then I want to tell you why so many different ones are used here, okay? Uh, the testimony of the Lord, that which testifies of him, amen? And didn't Jesus say in John 5, 39, search the scriptures, they are they which testify of me. <clears throat> um, uh, its specific task is to make wise the simple and and. You can follow along on a certain front here, but uh, making why, oh, what it's going to say is it's going to give a particular name, and then it's going to say what that specific thing does. Okay. In this case, it makes wise the simple. Okay. Um, let's see. Its specific task is to make wise the simple, to bring us from a surface relationship with God, Creator, Elohim, to wise relationship based on the hidden wisdom of God, which is the cross. The statutes of the Lord, this is also translated precepts. More, these are, now, now listen, because this is different. Moral injunctions, and not everything in the Bible or in the, the commandments and all the different things are moral in nature. You know, like, you know, if you see your brother's cow or something, you know, this sort of thing, take it back to him and whatever. <clears throat> and maybe there's some morality even to that, but there are examples that aren't. Moral injunctions that bring order and flow to one's life and the greater gathering. That it, it's, it's bringing better flow in your life and therefore to the rest of the body. Um, their specific task, to rejoice the heart. Okay, The commandment of the Lord, it is singular. It doesn't say the commandments of the Lord here. The commandment of the Lord, it, uh, uh, it is singular for all the commandments are summed up in one word, to love. It is pure, no mixture of ideas from the earth. All is from above. It is the law of the nature of God. To see it is true and pure, and what it does is it enlightens the eyes. Now, first of all, the commandment, it says the commandment of the Lord enlightens the eyes. Now let's just get real just for one second. I thought the Old Testament law, just you took it like it is. You didn't need any enlightenment of the eyes. It says go do this and you did it. Don't do that, you did it. But the same guy who wrote this says, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law, meaning there is something hidden beneath there. That is, that God intended all along that we not just uh, read it and, you know, because I'm telling you, you'll run into people and they'll say, look, you know, you're making too much of this. You're spiritualizing everything. Well, so did David and Paul then. I mean, let's, let's get real. And they said, even of the law, David's praying, open my eyes and I can behold wondrous things. You know, I always wondered when David said, um, uh, I love, your, I love your law. I delight in the law of the Lord. And I'm going, thou shall not steal, thou shall not kill. That's, are, you, are you really all really delighted in all that, you know? But that's not what he meant, you know? He saw the heart of the Lord in all of this. He really did meet the Lord. He didn't read a book. He met the Lord, and he met the heart of the Lord. He met the person, and he saw, and this is the wonder of the things I've been sharing recently about the habitation in David's heart. My Lord, he saw, God declares he saw what no other man saw. Just incredible because he, what? He had a heart after God. And that's, that's beautiful. The fear of the Lord. <clears throat> now there is good fear and there is bad fear. It is good to get slightly burned on a stove as a child and have a healthy fear of getting burned again. Amen? 
We may never remember the incident again, but the fear stays with us. We respect God like gravity or electricity, treat it according to its nature of creation, and it all functions properly without pain. Such are the scriptures. This fear is clean and not dirty. This fear is clean and not dirty. Like the healthy fear of touching a hot stove, it endures forever and ends up protecting us and saving us from many other dangers like campfires. Or you see what I'm saying? It, 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 it just reaches out and saves you from so many other like areas. All right. So when you see it in that thing, I, I, I wrote here, we respect God like gravity or electricity. I've been thinking and meditating, I'll probably never do it, especially now that I say it, about preaching a sermon called Gravity Kills. <laughs> and, and just to show that, uh, you know, if you go against gravity, it can kill you. You go against electricity, it can kill you. Gravity, I don't believe, was designed to kill us, not by God, you know. But gravity kills if you go contrary to it. <clears throat> and so the fear of the Lord, there is these aspects. Now, before I go with the next couple of ones, let me divide out a few of that we've said. The fear of the Lord, uh, let's see, where is that in scripture wise? Here, though it's number, verse nine, the fear of the Lord is clean. Huh? See, uh, I guess that's why I wrote the fear of the Lord is not dirty. <laughs> the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Okay? Um, that is saving you because you have a certain respect. You've, you've touched the stove and been burned. It saves you from many other things. But that's nothing like the statutes or the precepts of the Lord that are moral injunctions that are going to touch you on a whole different level. Do you understand what I'm saying? they're going to reach you on a whole different level than the fear of the Lord is going to reach you. And the fear of the Lord is going to reach you on a whole different level than statutes and, and uh, precepts. And the testimony of the Lord is going to reach you on a whole different level than moral injunctions. Okay, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, so I'm trying to establish this so that before we just keep rolling here. All right. Uh, the next one is the judgments of the Lord. This is not judgment day judgments, but the judgments God makes in a civil court. They are like the wisdom of Solomon. They are true according to the true situation and righteous, right and correct in their view of the situations. So we're, let's see, that's what verse, uh, the rest of verse 9. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are translated judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Then he goes into more to be desired are they. They. And, and the they here is speaking of all of these things working in you. The commandments of the Lord as he understands. Uh, the statutes of the Lord. The law of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Why? The testimony of the Lord. Why? Because they're all working different things. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord makes wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord will rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, and it enlightens your eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, and it endures forever, meaning you burn your hand on a stove, and the fear of the Lord will endure forever. You'll probably never do that again. Okay? The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and the honeycomb. Um, moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping with them there is great reward. All right, <clears throat> that's the end of that, that section, and I'll read just a few more things here on that. But <clears throat> what I want you to see is... We talked about the sun in its course. And we talked about the passion of the Lord for his church, his bride. Not for Christians, not just for people who believe a certain religion. And I say that, I, you know, 
I say I, I just don't believe I mean the word Christian is used twice in the Bible and most of the time it's you know at least half of that is not really a, a really good way of using it he wants the church he wants a bride he wants that which is after his kind he wants that so much now and now here's the deal he wants this one if you could if I could stand her up here the bride of Christ if I could stand her there what what would you see you would see one that is like him now you would see one that has a heart like he has you would see one that loves what he loves not loves what she loves and wants him uses him as the husband to get whatever she wants oh I'm sorry I just described modern-day Christianity just using him to get what they want and oh you know oh yeah I love the Lord you know it's like this I'm I'll put, I'm sorry I'll y'all know me I'm a bad person <clears throat> it's like standing in church and saying I love the Lord oh yes I love the, I love you Lord but when you walk out the door the way you live is you better love me Lord take care of this oh I hurt right here I need some money over here would you fix my car why don't you do this I mean it's all about slave boy get over here and do it now and am I right or wrong and and you know why am I mean for saying what you're doing. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's the way I look. I'm not, and I'm not trying to condemn. I'm actually going somewhere in a good way, and you'll end up fine. But if we can't deal with these things, if we can't lay them out, if we can't let the sun expose them and disinfect them, then we will be nothing like this one. She'll be pie in the sky and we'll go, oh, someday, you know, he's going to get a bride of his heart. Well, why don't you start today? <laughs> you know? <clears throat> so, I, I know that I, you know, this can sound wrong to some people. But all that I'm saying is I see what is in these scriptures. David wrote these scriptures. God bless you, my sweet brother. He is dealt with deeply over this. And he's saying, you know what? This law of the Lord, these commandments, all this stuff, this isn't just meant to destroy you like a hot sun. It is, it is meant to, for you to be in the desert of your life and, and drain out all the juices of your energy, strength, and everything so that you come into me and I'm your fullness and I'm your strength and I'm your life and your hope. And, you know, yeah, it is, it will, you know, it is going to devastate your earth but it's going to bring forth fruit beyond what you could have ever brought forth anyway, which is, you know, I, I thought about this the other day. I mean, it says the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, gentleness. So what do we do? We go out to copy the fruit, copy the fruit of the Spirit. Well, then it's not fruit then. When you copy it, it's not fruit. It's works. Well, guess what? It's not your fruit. It's his fruit. Don't copy. Let the Lord live in you. Let the Spirit live through you. Let the, the life of God fill his habitation, his vessel, his body, his temple. Anyway. All right. I'm going to read. I'm going to. Yes. 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 He did, and you can see that up here. Go ahead. Therefore, verse 7 on down.
that's, that's basically what it's saying here because it is, again, not exposing for the purpose of exposing. The Lord loves us too much. His passion is too strong to just hurt. He doesn't hurt. He, it, it hurts because what does it hurt? Folks, what does it hurt? It hurts our flesh. It hurts our pride. It hurts everything that we pray God get rid of. <laughs> and then when he starts doing it, we go, well, that hurt. That hurts, that, that hurts something I want to protect. You told me you wanted it dealt with. <laughs> you know? I, well, I do when it's a really uplifting service, but not in real life, not in real life situations. This hurts, you know? <clears throat> well, and so... And this whole thing is about his chamber and this, this uh, uh, um, uh, in them hath he set a tabernacle for the son. And that's what we're supposed to be. And so verse 7 on down isn't weird he's gone off the mark of what he was talking about in verse 1, 2, and 3, and 4. He's right on tap. He is dealing with us to make us into a habitation for him. He's emptying our, ourselves of ourselves so that we can be filled with the Son. And so he speaks highly. The law of the Lord is perfect. It's perfect. You know, the statue of the Lord, they're clean. You know, the fear of the Lord is clean. You know, he, he's, he's using this kind of terminology but we're, you know, and well, let me finish reading here and then we'll, we'll just wrap it up because these last words look again like in a certain sense, especially from the creation part, like he's departed. It's all one song. It is all one heart. It is the breath of a man who has truly seen the Lord in an incredible way and he's communicating like a poet or a songwriter. And not everybody, you know, gets, you know. I know uh, Silver was talking to me the other day, and I'm sure she wouldn't mind me telling this. She was talking to me the other day, and she said, you know, Randy, I really like everything you share. She said, it's just every time you share, it's just incredible. And she said, me and, me and Fred were talking about it. I said, man, you know, when he shares, it's just so good. And, and uh, she said, you know, I really... I don't really understand it all. <laughs> and then Fred said, you know, I don't either. And then, and then she said, it's like poetry. And he said, yeah, it's like poetry. Apparently you read it and go, wow, that sounds really great, but I don't get it. <laughs> she says, so when you preach, it's like poetry. <laughs> and I'm kind of going, I've read some of that kind of poetry. <laughs> <clears throat> anyway, all right, where was I? Um, so let me just read this last part here. The word, the word of the Lord is utterances. It reveals the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So when it's the word, he's revealing his heart. Judgments and ordinances, that's the same Hebrew word. It's legal pronouncements, rules of divine administration. What does that mean? Folks, there is a divine way that our lives can be ordered where the camp can be at peace with God and man. Is that possible? Yes, yes, yes. That's why, it's, that's why there are judgments or ordinances. It specifically touches that area. Okay? Uh, law, what is required? Unchangeable, universal to all. Commandments, orders for religious principles, precepts, moral obligations. Testimony, testifies of God's nature and purpose. Statutes, civil and religious appointments. All right. So we went back through that one more time to say this son that we read about in the first couple of verses is searching the earth. It is penetrating the whole earth. No place is fully free from its light and its heat and its search. And it is, uh, it is reaching, David is writing this, and he's saying this desire for a bride is reaching me on all sorts of levels. 
It's reaching me on a moral level, but it's also reaching me on a fear of the Lord respect level so that if I burn myself in this thing, you know, I've, you got the rope burned, you'll learn your lesson. And it's the, what does it say? It's, uh, uh, it's clean, enduring forever. You know, you just never forget the old rope burns after going through that. But that's a whole, see, that's not moral. You see what I'm saying? They're all different, and they're all touching you in a different way. They're reaching you and conforming you. They're pulling out what is you, but they're bringing forth what is Christ because that's why he's saying these things are pure. The, the commandment of the Lord is pure. The statutes of the Lord are right. The law of the Lord is perfect. The testimony of the Lord is sure. Um, he's, it, it's, he's declaring not bad things. He's declaring the emptying of us and the bringing forth of Christ in all kind of areas, the judgments of the Lord, it's affecting us in ways that we can't even fully comprehend. We are becoming, I, I almost want to say the word of the Lord in the sense of he's the living word and he's living in us. And it does say we're living epistles. You know, we're living epistles. And so, just this thought that he cares that much. Now, somebody would say, I want to go to a church where they never, never hit on anything negative. You know, how much do you love the Lord? How much do you want this, this, this bridegroom to get out of us this, after his kindness, likeness of kind, and bring us into oneness? Well, most of those people, folks, they're not. You know, I mean, when I was in Bible school, there was a guy, some of you know Skip Haynes. Skip Haynes told me when we, when we put him through our battery of tests, he came out as a genius. He was a genius. He was Deb's old boyfriend, as a matter of fact. And, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, we won't say any more about that. But, but, um, he, you know, and so one time we're all sitting around talking and, and a bunch of long-haired freaks in this Bible school, so we huddled together a lot. We're talking, and, and I said, man, I just want to know the Lord. And I'm just, he, he, he said, why are you digging in the Word the way you are? I mean, I, they would go out and have fun and go down to Lee Park and hang out and stuff like that, and I'd stay back, and I'd just search the Word, and, just, I'm just, and I wasn't a scholar. I just wanted to know Jesus, you know what I mean? I'm like, God, open my eyes, you know? And it's sweeter than the honeycomb. You know, I want to, I want that. You know, I want to, I don't, I don't believe to David he was joking. You know, or, you know, symbolizing or whatever you want to say. He, he was that way. And I just went, I want to be that way. So he goes, he goes, you know, I don't, uh, I don't hardly read the word at all. This is genius boy. <laughs> and, uh. And I said, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, that's genius girl. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so, so, he, so I said, you know, so why are you not searching the scriptures? He said, ignorance is bliss. I said, you know, ignorance could be hell. I mean, you know, whether you end up there or you end up in a life that doesn't understand this and Christ hadn't been formed in you and you don't even care, you just want to live your own life and you just want to be free. You know, folks, you are never free if it's not Christ. And I'm telling you that's a true fact. And I'll tell you one thing I found out about the devil when I was, when, when I was a Jesus freak. I found out that the devil will give you just enough freedom and junk that you want just enough to get you hooked and then you'll be controlled by it you know whether it was drugs or this or that you never are free it's controlling you and then you know I'd have people come up to me and go oh I'm free you people are bound by you know religion you know you're not free dude you are you are messed up <clears throat> all right so my whole point is this, this whole thing where, where the Lord cares so much, he's reaching into civil 
relationships, societal relationships. That's part of the, the statutes. He's, he's reaching into all of these things and he's doing a work that is making us that bride. He's making us that habitation for the son, like it says in verse 4. Hallelujah. All right. Let me uh, try to finish this up here then. Let's, let's look in verse... Uh, well, I'll just read what I got here. From verse uh, 10 through 11, the statements are made concerning the scriptures as a whole in all of its various aspects. More to be desired than gold, sweeter than honey. They warn the servant, and keeping them is great reward. David is just like, golly, this is, this is working out, okay? Right? I mean, now, now listen, listen, because you need to, you need to agree with me at this statement so that I can move to the next verses. <laughs> he, he's saying, man, more to be desired than gold, sweeter than honey. They warn your servant, and keeping them is great reward. Okay, so he's like getting it together, and it's really, he's really loving this, right? All right, now let's go to verse 12 to the end of the chapter. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. What is the great transgression? The fall of Adam, I would assume. You know, I'll be free from that. I'll be free from the fall of Adam and, and be one with the risen son. Then he says, let, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. He has been on a journey through this Psalm 19 thing. And he has, he has seen that the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament declares his handiwork. And he's, he's seeing this glorious sun coming up every day, day by day, night by night. They're telling their story. They're, they're, they're speaking forth. There is, there is no speech or language where this voice is not heard. The line has gone out through all the earth. And he's seeing, my God, even creation is declaring the things of his heart that this bridegroom is going forth and he's proven it every day. This is me. This is my intent. And then he goes, the law of the Lord is like that. But, but then he says, but that son also is trying me. It is, it is uh, exposing me. It is bringing me down. Um, well, into verse 6, uh, and there is nothing hidden from the heat thereof. It's just sapping you of all that is you. And then he says, the law of the Lord is clean. It's like the sun. It's enlightening the eyes. It is, it is bringing uh, um, a warmth and it's showing us the passion of the Lord and the reality of the Lord. It's, do, it's, it's saying all these things. And he doesn't really, he is declaring the glory of that sun in his course. But then he says, because isn't it interesting that at the end of verse 6 is where it says there's nothing hidden from the heat thereof. In the first five verses, he declares how glorious this sun and this firmament is. But at the end of it, the last thing he says, this, this heat, there's nothing hidden from the heat thereof. It's just taking its toll, you know. So then he does the same order. He goes through their, the statutes, all these things, they're perfect, they're glorious, they're beautiful. And then he starts showing the heat as it's being brought to bear on the hymn. Um, who, who can understand his errors? There are things wrong with me that are not just issues. You, you know, do you understand what I mean? I mean, there are, there are hidden things. There are things contrary to this glorious one that I'm seeing. Uh, who can understand? Who, cleanse thou me from secret faults. Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll read here. Errors, secret faults, presumptuous sins. As the sun and words show up the darkness, 
Who can be aware of all that we offend in? And isn't that truth? We're probably, you know, consider it like this. Some years ago, God showed something in your life that was just not Jesus and wrong, but you didn't know it before he showed it to you. And so you just went, oh, God, and you repented and you felt bad, you know, but you had been that way from that point all the way back to when you first became a Christian. So it had been there. He saw it. You didn't. Right? And he was okay. I mean, he wants to cleanse you. He wants to bring, but it was always there. So then you went from there, and then years later, he showed you something else, something different. And you look back to that time. You oh, God, you know, he knew about that too. You didn't. You know? And so David is saying, look, I've been around the block a few times. i am messed up deeper than I even know. Your son is exposing that which is not the bride. Not, I'm not a habitation in certain areas. I'm, a, I'm the inhabitor. I'm kicking the son out of his own ch bride chamber, bridegroom chambers. And, and he, he says, I bet you there's secrets to errors and, and, and presumptuous sins at work in me that are so contrary to the beauty of this, the glory of this heavenly reality that I'm seeing. And the, the heat of it has taken its toll on him, but God, the, but the bridegroom himself is the son. And he's doing that because when he gets through this pure heart that, that's in David that says, I want you, Lord. I don't want those things to have dominion over me. I want to be free. I want to be cleansed. I want to be disinfected by this light, by this sun. Sins of error are sins of ignorance. Sins of ignorance. Do you not believe that we commit sins of ignorance all the time? David speaks as if these inward failures are his enemies. He wants God to give him victory and not let them have victory or dominion over him. Why? Well, David's the man talking about being a habitation and all of us, all of Israel being a habitation. He's seeing things that are like blocking the doorway. He's not, just, he's not just a good Christian guy going, Oh, Lord, don't let bad things happen. Don't let me sin. This is not random thoughts here. This is all in line with, with the Son, with us being the tabernacle for the Son. And like I said in verse 4, and coming into the bride chamber, bridegroom chamber with him. If God gives him that victory which is the cross, then and only then will he not be found guilty under the great transgression, Adam's fall. Then he will be free. Presumptuous sins are sins of pride that lead the way without being under authority. When I say lead the way, pride leads the way. It jumps out in front and says, oh no, I know what to do. You know, and, we, and there may not be any wickedness in our heart to do that, there's just the pride of presumption that thinks it knows what's best. You know, where we're not checking with the Lord, we're not saying, you're the sun, I'm the moon. I have no light to shine except you shine through me. And then finally, verse 14. I mean, incredibly, this guy and his heart towards the Lord, it's just something else. Verse 14, he ends with, Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And I wrote, Acceptable is only done with the acceptable sacrifice. We, this is a hard thing for Christians because we weren't Jews first. There is nobody that is acceptable to God except through Jesus Christ, the only acceptable sacrifice. Now that's a hard one because we believe that we became acceptable, but folks who are only accepted in the beloved, in union with the beloved, in joint relationship and life like a branch to a vine, 
The vine's accepted, the branches are accepted. But if you didn't come out of Judaism, you don't think that way, and especially modern day Christianity. Well, we're all just accepted now. What? No, we're not. God never in the Old Testament had anyone that was accepted except that sacrifice, and that sacrifice cleansed the high priest so much that he only got to go into the Holy of Holies one time a year, or one at one one day a year. Meaning, that's not very acceptable. <laughs> you know, it's not like you're running in there like David did later on. David figured it out when he when he set up uh, David's tabernacle and put the the uh, Ark of the Covenant in there, and he'd go in and out. And I mean, I've got beautiful scriptures where he he relates to that Ark as the Lord Himself and approaches it in in respect and honor, but in love and in just incredible joy. We need to understand. That when the any time it says acceptable, don't put your name there. Put Jesus, and then say, "I'm," but I'm one with Jesus. In other words, if you if there was a situation where you stood before God today, you stood before God, and He said, "Why should I?" And I'm using all these terms, but I mean, just follow me. If there was a situation where you stood before God today, and He said, "Why should I let you in?" Don't be stupid. Don't don't mention yourself. I'm just saying, you, that's the biggest, well, I did this, and I did that, and I did, he's going, I never knew you, I don't, you know, but if you say, well, you know, here's, here's my plan, why should I let you in, why should you, you know, I'm going to kind of go like this, and I'm going to point over to Jesus sitting at his right hand, go, he made me one with himself, is that Okay. And he'll look over at Jesus, and Jesus will go. You know, and, uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> Deb had it better than me. He'll, uh, he'll look over at Jesus, and Jesus will go, you know, pointing to his nail scar to him, you know. And the father will go, okay, okay. But most people, because of their Christianity, folks, they're going to open their mouth and condemn themselves. I mean, think about it. They're, the first thing on their mind, I mean, if you meet some other Christian, what is the first thing you start telling them so that you'll be recognized as something? You tell them all the great stuff you're doing for God and all this kind of stuff. Well, we get that pattern and we just keep using it over and over and over until we stand before God. And then we go, well, you know, I tell you, I spent my whole life in church. Did you live as the church? No, but I was in the building. Anyway, sorry. All right, so acceptable is only done with the acceptable sacrifice but David's offering is offered up through his mouth and his heart in other places he describes it as the calves of his lips meaning that Christ crucified would be the motive and substance of what he speaks and what gives him acceptability it is not a physical sacrifice but a spiritual sacrifice it is not us being acceptable but the one that we offer to God that brings us acceptance. The actual translation says, be always acceptable. In other words, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be always acceptable. That's the original Hebrew, which is an ongoing desire in David's heart. It is a reference to the daily sacrifice, the burnt offering daily every morning and every evening every morning and every evening just as stable as the sun every morning and every evening and its course so that that burnt offering was offered every morning and every evening <clears throat> the reality set forth in this psalm have started in the heavenlies moved down to the word and the earth and ended with an open and seeking heart after god it ends in personal change Spirit, soul, and body. All right, that's it. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for your... We thank you for your heart and the way that you really are. Lord, may, may our eyes be open to see you the way you are. May our eyes be open to see you the way David and others saw you and, 
had such confidence and love and lack of fear because they, they saw your mission, they saw your course, they saw your heart. Lord, may the word, the law of the Lord be perfect, may it convert our soul, may all these aspects be transformed by Christ into the image of Christ so that we are a tabernacle for the Son and he can live in us in these manners and that he can touch all sorts of areas described by all the different names given here. And then finally, Father, may our heart just be broken as the Son just exposes and, and, and digs deep as the Son himself does that because of his passion to have us with him and to have us one with him. And may we end with the heart of David this, to want our words, our meditations, the things that are in our heart be acceptable by this one, the only one who can live this. And therefore, we are the body and he's the life. We are the temple and he is the God that inhabits us. And then we'll say acceptable in thy sight because you are my strength and you are my redeemer, meaning, Lord, you are everything to us and the fulfillment of what all the scriptures refer to when it says that we would be a habitation of you through the Spirit. For we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Alrighty, we're dismissed.